this is Dr. Amahit Nichols, and here is the information on the latest US FDA approvals the week of October 16th through October 20th, 2023. Normally, this podcast comes out on Monday, so that was yesterday, and today I'm recording this, and it's Tuesdays because there was a lot of activity at the FDA last week, so it just took a little extra longer to get all these little snippets pulled together. So apologies for being a little late with that, but here we are. All right, so first up this week, the FDA has approved Bimzelax, that's B-I-M-Z-E-L-X, also called Bimikizumab B-K-Z-X, for the treatment of moderate to severe plaque psoriasis in adults who are candidates for systemic therapy or phototherapy. Bimikizumab is the first and only approved psoriasis treatment designed to selectively inhibit two key cytokines driving the inflammatory processes, and those are interleukin-17A and IL-17F. The approval of bimikizumab is supported by data from three phase three trials, Be Ready, Be Vivid, and Be Sure. The approval comes after the FDA initially delayed its decision in October 2021 because of COVID-related travel restrictions preventing inspection of their manufacturing sites in Belgium. There are multiple therapies now available for moderately to severely active plaque psoriasis, which is a chronic disease in which the immune system becomes overactive, causing skin cells to multiply too quickly. Moderate to severe plaque psoriasis affects more than 7.5 million adults in the U.S. Also last week, the FDA approved pembrolizumab or Keytruda in combination with platinum containing chemotherapy as neoadjuvant treatment followed by prembolizumab monotherapy as post-surgical adjuvant treatment for patients with receptacle non-small cell lung cancer. This marks the fifth indication for pembrolizumab in non-small cell lung cancer. Pembrolizumab is an anti-PD-1 therapy that increases the ability of the immune system to help detect and fight tumor cells. Pembrolizumab is already approved in multiple tumor types in both metastatic and early stage disease. This week's approval of Keytruda is supported by data from the Phase 3 Keynote 671 trial. The approval was granted to Merck, the manufacturer of Pembrolizumab. Also last week, the FDA granted approval to BMS Bristol-Myers Squibb for its PD-1 inhibitor, nivolumab Opdivo, and that's for a new indication for the adjuvant treatment of melanoma in patients aged 12 years and older with completely resected stage 2B or 2C melanoma. The approval was based on findings from the Phase 3 Checkmate 76K trial, In a written release, John M. Kirkwood, MD, with the University of Pittsburgh School of Medicine, noted that within five years of diagnosis, up to one half of patients with surgically resected stage 2B or 2C melanoma see their cancer return, which underscores the need for additional treatment options that may help reduce the risk of recurrence. In addition to the new indication in melanoma, Opdivo carries multiple indications for various cancer types, including non-small cell lung cancer, kidney cancer, and Hodgkin lymphoma. Of course, all the package inserts are available at nascentmc.com under the podcast tab if you'd like to look up any of these prescribing informations. Also last week, the FDA approved UCB Farmers Zeluca Plan. That's a complement C5 inhibitor for the treatment of patients with myasthenia gravis or MG. The brand name for Zeluca Plan is Zilbrisk. That's Z-I-L-B-R-Y-S-Q. This subcutaneously delivered medication is indicated for patients with acetylcholine receptor antibody positive generalized MG. The approval was granted based on data from the Phase 3 RAISE study, R-A-I-S-E, in which the Luca plan demonstrated rapid and clinically meaningful improvements in MG-specific efficacy outcomes. Generalized MG is a somewhat rare autoimmune disease with a global prevalence of up to 350 cases per every 1 million people. 
MG is associated with a variety of symptoms, including severe muscular weakness that can result in double vision, drooping eyelids, difficulty swallowing, chewing and talking, as well as life-threatening weakness of muscles involved in respiration. So Leucoplan or Zilbrisk is the second complement C5 inhibitor to be approved for use in MG in the US. The other is Eculizumab Soliris, manufactured by Alexion, part of AstraZeneca. Also this week, the FDA approved Cab Trio, also known as IDP-126, and that's a triple combination of clindamycin, 1.2%, adapalene, 0.15%, and benzoyl peroxide, 3.1%. This is a topical gel for the treatment of acne vulgaris in patients aged 12 years and older. The indication is granted to Bausch Health and Orthodermatologics and is the first fixed dose triple combination treatment approved for patients with acne. Captrio is designed to treat the inflammation, bacteria, and follicular hyperkeratinization associated with moderate to severe acne. Up to 50 million Americans have acne, which occurs when hair follicles become obstructed with sebum and skin cells, resulting in the formation of whiteheads, blackheads, or pimples on the face, shoulders, and other areas of the body. Depending on its severity, acne can cause emotional distress and permanent scarring of the skin. Also last week, the FDA approved Pembrea, which makes this the only vaccine for the prevention of the five most common serogroups causing meningococcal disease in adolescents. Pembrea provides coverage against groups A, B, C, W, and Y, and has the potential to help simplify a complex vaccination schedule, according to the manufacturer of Pfizer, Inc. The FDA's decision is based on data from phase two and phase three trials, which demonstrated that Pangrea has robust immunogenicity, non inferior to other vaccines available, which are Trumemba and Menveo for all serogroups. Pembrea was well tolerated with a favorable safety profile and is approved for use in individuals aged 10 through 25 years of age. It's administered as a two-dose series given six months apart. The CDC Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices, ACIP, will meet on October 25th, that's tomorrow, to discuss recommendations for the appropriate use of Pembrea in adolescents and young adults. Also last week, the FDA approved the expanded use of a once-daily injection for sorotide, also called Voxogo, to treat children under the age of five with the most common form of short-limbed dwarfism. The drug, manufactured by Biomarin Pharmaceutical, was in 2021 the first therapy to approve for treating this genetic disorder, achondroplasia. And that was for children aged five and older. So this latest approval is for children younger than five. The FDA's latest decision was supported by trial data that showed that the therapy had similar efficacy and safety in children under five years as for older children. Achondroplasia is a form of disproportionate short stature caused by a gene mutation and occurs in about one in every 25,000 newborns. Asaratide is a C-type naturetic peptide, CNP analog, intended to increase linear growth in children with achondroplasia and open epiphyses, those are the growth plates in bones. And now a word from the supporter of this podcast, Nascent Medical. Is your company in need of medical writing assistance? Just visit nascentmc.com. That's nascentmc.com, N-A-S-C-E-N-T-M-C, as in medical communications, dot com. Nascent Medical's team of native English-speaking MD and PhD-level medical writers create fast turnaround needs assessments, medical news pieces, manuscripts, slide decks, ad board summaries, and much, much more for the price of what a single freelancer might charge. But at Nascent, we have freelancers who are always available and have the exact background and experience in the specialty you need for your project. Just visit nascentmc.com for an immediate quote during business hours, Eastern Daylight Time, EDT. Nascent Medical, you never have to be without excellent medical writing help. 
Also last week, the FDA approved pilocarpin hydrochloride ophthalmic solution, 0.4%. That's also called QLOSI, Q-L-O-S-I, for the treatment of presbyopia or blurry age-related neurovision in adult patients. The approval was granted to Oracis Pharmaceuticals based on data from the NEAR1 and NEAR2 clinical trials. QLOSI is a preservative-free formulation of low-dose pilocarpin and a multifaceted vehicle. Culosi can be used daily or as needed up to twice a day. Near visual acuity is improved by pupil modulation leading to a pinhole effect and an increase in depth of field. Culosi is expected to be commercially available in the U.S. in the first half of 2024. Also last week, the FDA approved maxigesic IV for post-operative pain. Maxigesic IV is a combination of 100 milligrams of paracetamol with 300 milligrams of ibuprofen solution for infusion post-operatively. The approval for the NDA granted to Hyloris Pharmaceuticals in Belgium is based on positive data from a phase three program in which maxagesic IV demonstrated it was well tolerated and offered faster onset of action and higher pain relief compared to either agent, that's paracetamol or ibuprofen alone, as well as placebo. The study also reported reduced opioid usage rates as a secondary outcome. Distribution of maxagesic IV in U.S. hospitals is anticipated to begin early 2024. Maxagesic IV is to date approved in over 40 countries worldwide. All right, just a couple more. The FDA has approved Tenapanor X Foza, that's X P H O Z A H, as an add on therapy in patients with chronic kidney disease who cannot tolerate or have an inadequate response to phosphate binders. Tenapanor is a first in class phosphate absorption inhibitor with a differentiated mechanism of action compared to other agents with this activity. Tenapanor blocks the sodium hydrogen exchanger 3, NEG3, reducing phosphate absorption in the gut rather than binding phosphate. Exposa has been shown to help increase the proportion of patients achieving target serum phosphate concentrations. The FDA approval is the result of three phase three clinical trials, Freedom, Block, and Amplify. And those evaluated the efficacy and safety of tenapanor as both a monotherapy and combination treatment with a phosphate binder therapy. A high level of blood phosphorus is often a sign of kidney damage and can result in osteoporosis, joint pain, cardiovascular issues. Exposa, or tenapanor, manufactured by Ardolix, was rejected twice by the FDA in the last two years due to concerns about the magnitude of the treatment effect and the risk of diarrhea. Ardolix has argued that the drug has clinical meaningful benefits and obviously the FDA agrees now that they've approved it. And they also said that the risk of diarrhea is manageable. The company resubmitted its Tenepanor application to the FDA in April. Exposa is set to launch later this year. And finally this week, the FDA approved Zimfentra, that's infliximab DYYB, for maintenance therapy in adults with moderate to severely active ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease following treatment with an infliximab product administered intravenously. Zimfentra is a subcutaneous version of Celtrion's infliximab biosimilar. Zimfentra, as with other forms of infliximab, blocks the action of TNF-alpha. Zimfentra was approved based on the findings of the Liberty UC and Liberty CD studies and is the first and only FDA-approved subcutaneous formulation of infliximab approved for this indication. All right, thanks so much for listening, and I hope you'll be back next Monday for the happenings coming up this week from the FDA. I do appreciate your listening, and if you wouldn't mind telling your colleagues, you can tell your friends too if they're in the industry, but other than that, I don't think they'll be interested in all of this. But do tell your colleagues, because I do think that it helps to have just a big picture overview of all the approvals going on, especially if you're a medical writer or if you have to interact with clinicians, like if you're an MSL or if you're in the pharma industry, you got to learn about all the things going on. All right. Thanks so much for listening. Take care. Have a great week.